Hi, welcome once again. In this tutorial video, we will take a look at how the procedural foliage tool works. Over the course of this tutorial video, you will learn how to create, set up, and spawn an entire forest's worth of trees inside of UE5 using only the procedural foliage tool. You will also be introduced to key properties and settings that will help you shape your virtual forest to fit your project's needs. You will also be exposed to all of the required assets and properties the procedural foliage tool requires to function correctly and deliver the results you want. When you have completed this tutorial video, you will have a new level that should look similar to this. You have some prerequisites. Before you can use the procedural foliage tools in your project, you must first enable them by doing the following. From the main menu, open the edit menu, then click on editor preferences. Inside of the editor preferences, right click on the experimental section. Enable the procedural foliage option by clicking on the checkmark box next to the word procedural. You will also need to download the Open World Demo Collection Content Pack from the Unreal Engine Marketplace as some of the content from the collection will be used in the tutorial video. Once the Open World Demo Collection is downloaded and added to the project that you are using to follow along with this tutorial video, by doing the following. Now let's start with creating foliage type actors. We already have a level and a landscape with auto material on it. Please check the video on Auto Material Tutorial. Now create a new procedural foliage spawner by right-clicking in the Content Browser, expanding the Foliage section, and then clicking on the Procedural Foliage Spawner. Name the Procedural Foliage Spawner in this example forest. Drag the Procedural Foliage Spawner from the Content Browser into the level. Scale the Procedural Foliage Spawner to 100, 110 in the X, Y, and Z axis to create a large area to spawn your forest Indiana. Now that we have our spawner, we need to give it some foliage to spawn. To do this, right-click in the Content Browser expanding the Foliage section and then click on Static Mesh Foliage. Name the Static Mesh Foliage as Tree. Now save all. Now we have to define the spawner what to spawn. Here we will set up the foliage type actors to work with the procedural foliage spawner. Open up the procedural foliage spawner by double clicking in the content browser. When the procedural foliage spawner is opened, now add a new item to the foliage types array by clicking the plus sign icon that is to the right of the foliage types menu option. So in the procedural foliage spawner, now add foliage types. In the content browser, select the tree static mesh foliage and drag it into the foliage type object, or press the arrow icon to load the selected static mesh foliage into the procedural foliage spawner. Now open up the tree static mesh foliage by double clicking on it in the content browser. At the top of the tree static mesh foliage, locate the mesh section and then click on the drop down menu that says None. Locate the Hilltree Static Mesh from the Open World Demo Collection either by typing tree as the search term or by scrolling through the list and load it by clicking on it. Back in the viewport select the procedural foliage spawner that was placed in the level and then expand the procedural foliage section under the details panel. Under the Procedural Foliage section click on the Resimulate button and you should now see the Procedural Foliage spawner densely packed with tress like this. In order to see the proper results, you will need to click on Build in the main toolbar to rebuild the lighting every time you use the Resimulate button to create or alter the procedural foliage. This can take a long time due to the large number of static meshes involved. Now we will tweak Foliage Type Object Properties. Foliage type objects, both static mesh foliage and actor foliage, come with a number of different properties. In the following section we will take a look at what properties are available in foliage type objects and how you can manipulate these properties to get the results you desire. Open up the tree static mesh foliage. Now let's check the placement options. The placement section is where you can adjust how a foliage type object's meshes are placed on objects in the level. Expand the placement section and make sure that both align to normal and random yaw are enabled. Under the procedural section of the static mesh foliage expand the collision section and set the shade radius to 50. The collision section determines which foliage type objects should be removed when two foliage type objects are competing for the same spawn location or relative space. 
Select the procedural foliage spawner that was placed in the level and under the procedural foliage section click on the Resimulate button. So every time some changes are done on procedural foliage spawner, please press the Restimulate button. Here is the comparison of collision shade radius of 50, 100 and 500. Back in the tree static mesh foliage collapse the collision section and expand the clustering section, then set number steps to zero, so that we get trees that are all the same size and age and then press the resimulate button. When completed you should have something that looks similar to the image below. Clustering uses a number of properties such as density, age, and proximity to help determine how the specified foliage type objects mesh instances should be placed, grouped and spread around inside of the procedural foliage spawner. While we now have some space in between our trees, the overall density is still a little too high. To fix this, set the initial seed density to 0.25 and then click on the Resimulate button. As you can see, setting the initial seed density to 0.25 greatly reduced the density of our forest because we are only growing and spreading trees for a single year. To fix this set the number steps back to 3, which will grow and spread the trees for 3 years, and then click on the Resimulate button. So here is the comparison of clustering section, number steps to 0 and 3. And again some more comparison on initial seed density of 0.25 and 0.5 with number step set as 0. Expand the growth section then set the following parameters to the following settings. Max age as 20.0 and procedural scale max as 10.0. The growth section allows you to adjust how a foliage type object's mesh instances will grow and get bigger over time. Finally, in the instance settings under the cull distance option, set the max value to 20,000 and then click on the resimulate button. When completed you should have something that looks similar to the image below. The instance settings allows you to adjust how a foliage type object's mesh instances will be displayed in the level. Inside the instance settings you can set or adjust many different properties like cold distance, shadowing, and collision. Now we will see how to use multiple foliage type objects. Adding another species of tree to your virtual forest will greatly help to increase the realism and overall look and feel. Luckily, the procedural foliage spawner allows for you to spawn multiple foliage type objects resulting in one single procedural foliage spawner being able to spawn an entire forest with a multitude of different trees. In the following section we will take a look at how you can set up a procedural foliage spawner to work with multiple foliage types. You will be continuing to work with the forest level that was used in the last step. Inside of the content browser select the tree 1 static mesh foliage and then press Ctrl plus W on the keyboard to duplicate it using tree 2 as the name. Open the newly created tree 2 static mesh foliage and under the mesh section change the mesh to this with some other tree static mesh. Now open up the procedural foliage spawner and expand the foliage type section. Click on the plus sign icon to add the option to input another foliage type object. In the content browser, select the tree 2 static mesh foliage and drag it into the foliage type object, or press the arrow icon to load the selected static mesh foliage into the procedural foliage spawner. Select the procedural foliage spawner that was placed in the level and then click on the resimulate button. When completed you should see something like this. To make the forest look more interesting open up the tree 2 static mesh foliage and adjust the following parameters with the following values. The numbers and options that are listed below were selected because they will produce a forest that has interesting clustering and growth interaction with the static mesh foliage instances that are already in use. However please feel free to experiment with these numbers and settings till you get something that suits your needs. Number steps as 4. Initial seed density as 0.125. Average spread distance, as 100. Can grow in shade, as enabled. Spawns in shade, as enabled. Max age, as 15. Overlap priority, as 1. Procedural scale, as max 5.0. Once the settings have been adjusted click on the resimulate button on the procedural foliage spawner and you should now have something that looks similar to this. 
Here in this clip we have made the scene unlit, so as to maintain the FPS. Here, you can see multiple varieties of trees, and, also two species of trees, with multiple aging. Now that you have seen that power the procedural foliage tool offers, try using the tools listed below in conjunction with what you just learned about the procedural foliage tool to try and make a level that looks like this. Hope this video helps you to initiate your journey into the creative world of Unreal Engine. Please like this video if you find it helpful and informative, and subscribe to our channel for newer updates and game development tutorials. Thanks, thanks a lot, see you in the next video.